Welcome to episode six of A View from Mount Sinai. I'm Dan Fraring, the Director of Education for the Light and Health Research Center at Mount Sinai. Today we're gonna to talk about measuring light with smartphones. Smartphones have become ubiquitous in our lives. Almost everyone has one and uses it on a daily basis. Shortly after the introduction of the smartphone in 2007, the first apps were developed. Smartphone apps are now available to monitor almost every aspect of our lives, from how many steps we take each day to how many calories we burn when we exercise. Smartphone apps have helped Americans to become obsessed with measurement. The field of lighting is not immune from this measurement obsession. Almost every lighting standard or guideline includes light level recommendations. These range from how much light we should have to safely drive on a street at night to the amount of light we need for emergency egress in a stairway to the light level we need to comfortably see and perform tasks in our offices, schools, and our homes. Light level recommendations have also been developed for the amount of light we should have during the day, evening, and night to promote circadian entrainment and healthy sleep. How easy would it be if we could simply hold up a cell phone to our eye level to see how much light we were getting in our eye in any given setting? But measurement is only useful if it is accurate and repeatable. To see how well smartphones actually measure light, the Light and Health Research Center tested a number of different phones and different apps currently available to measure illuminance or light level. So we're here in the photometric laboratory at the Light and Health Research Center and I'm joined by Nick Skinner. Nick is a researcher here at the LHRC and he led the evaluations that we did of the cell phones and photometry applications. So, Nick, tell us about the setup. Tell us what research we did. Sure. Um, so what we were looking to do is uh, get a handle on um, what the performance of the various uh, cell phones and cell phone apps uh, would be sort of right out of the box. So if somebody who doesn't have uh, a calibrated illuminance standard downloaded one of these apps, installed it on their phone, and went out to take measurements, we were sort of looking to see how accurate those measurements would actually be. Are they something that a person could rely on or, or not? So in order to do that, what we did is we, cal uh, we created this uh, apparatus which has a, um, a calibrated um, illuminance meter that reads the entire spectrum of the light source and calculates an illuminance value based on that. And then we also have this, um, this holder which holds a cell phone uh, with the camera at the same level as the light sensor and also in the same plane. And what we did is we took measurements at uh, various light levels, uh, 5 lux, 50, 500, and 5,000. So we wanted to get a, a wide range of values. Um, anywhere from 5 lux would be like um, under street lighting or something like that at night whereas 5,000 would be daylight levels. So we wanted to see how they would do across those um, various levels. And also we used um, white light sources, uh, both an LED type and um, an incandescent type to see whether or not the spectrum might have any effect. So how many cell phones did we test and what types? So we, um, there's apps available both for iOS devices from Apple as well as Android devices. Um, so what we did is we just borrowed some phones from our colleagues here in the lab and we got three different iOS phones and we got three different Android phones. And how many apps on each phone? For each, um, for each operating system we evaluated three apps. Um, for iOS we looked at a fourth one and um, it, it wasn't producing reliable enough information. It would always uh, basically read the same value so we discontinued uh, that one and we, we chose a, an additional one. Okay, so summarize, what did we find? 
Um, I guess I'll start with iOS. Um, the iOS devices were very, um, I'll say, repeatable and very consistent with each other. Regardless of the vintage of phone or the model, they seem to perform very similarly. Uh, for levels uh, 50 lux or higher that we tested, um, they perform very well, 5% uh, error or less, which is, which is actually quite good. Um, below 50 lux, uh, they seem to struggle. So somewhere between 50 and 5 lux is sort of the cutoff of where you could rely on it. Um, so uh, if, as long as your levels are above 50, I think you could pretty confidently um, use the phone with two different apps that we found. One was called Photone, and the other one was called LM3000. Okay. And both of them actually read uh, almost identically. They were very close to each other, um, less than half a percent different or something like that. So they were effectively the same and uh, very precise. How about the Android phones? The Android phones were much more of a mixed bag. Some did quite well, um, others not as well. Um, my personal phone's an Android phone. It's on the test rig right now. I just, uh, in setting up for this show and tell, I, uh, I set the thing up and we took a measurement with our calibrated meter and we have 525 lux. The phone itself right now is reading 548. So that's actually pretty reasonable. But the issue is you go to different light levels or you take a different phone and you can get wildly different results. We saw on average in errors, uh, percent errors ranging between 40% and uh, 80 to 85%, which is just, <clears throat> it's just not something you could rely on. Um, so some cases you might do well, other cases maybe not. So, and the only real way to actually know whether it would be reliable or not is to actually have a calibrated instrument. If you have a calibrated instrument, maybe it doesn't make sense to be taking your readings with a cell phone. Yeah, that would be true. All right, thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. There is a quote attributed to Lord Kelvin that speaks to the importance of measurement. When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. So can we rely on our smartphones to take lighting measurements? Yes and no. Yes, we need to select the phone and the app carefully. However, we still need to be careful. We need to know that smartphone lighting measurements can be accurate at high light levels, like those found in offices or schools during the day. Since we need high light levels during the day to promote both excellent visual conditions and proper circadian entrainment, these devices can perform quite well. Importantly, and perhaps most critically, smartphones cannot accurately measure light levels outdoors at night or in a dimly lighted stairwell with only egress lighting turned on. So no, we should not rely on smartphone lighting measurements for any critical, dim lighting applications. Finally, it is important to remember that light measurements from any device can be accurate and repeatable, but the effect of the measured light on people can be quite variable. Each person perceives the same light differently. An older adult, for example, will not see light the same way as a teenager due to their aging eyes, and even one person will not see the light in the same way at all times. In any space, we can never be sure where someone is looking or how much light is getting to their eyes. So even with the most accurate light meter, there is always some degree of uncertainty about the meaning of each measurement. Measurement can only go so far. One also needs wisdom to interpret those measurements. Thank you for joining us for this episode of A View from Mount Sinai. We hope to see you again next month.